So the other day I was browsing the internet, as I sometimes do, and I came across this article about what $100,000 is actually worth in different American cities. And that's when I found this. According to the article, $100,000 in New York City is only worth about $36,000 after taxes and adjusting to the cost of living. I live in New York City and I work a full-time job. I make well below $100,000, like a lot below. And I live in Manhattan, the most expensive bureau, boro, 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 the most expensive part of New York City. So how do I manage to survive? Well, I guess you could say I live a pretty bohemian lifestyle. But the real answer is I have no idea. Like I definitely try to save money. I don't go out that much and I try to limit expenses. But to be honest, I really, like, I don't have a budget, so I don't know actually exactly what I'm doing with my money. That's why I decided to track my expenses for a week and break it down into a video for you guys so you can see how much money I spend in a week, what I spend my money on, and how I manage to survive in this crazy expensive city making less than six figures. So make sure to hit the like button and let's get into it. What's up guys, welcome to Harlem, New York City. Today's a Saturday, right now I'm on my way to the supermarket. I usually do my shopping on a Saturday and that's why I decided to start the video on a Saturday or start this week of spending on a Saturday because I do most of my spending on the weekends and then I cook meals and use the stuff I bought throughout the week. So right now I'm on my way to the supermarket, let's go. I always make sure to stock up on some fresh fruits and vegetables for the week, but I try not to get too much because if they go bad, I feel too bad throwing it out so I've ended up eating a lot of rotten spinach that way. I always stop by the bakery and grab a couple pastries because they're delicious and they remind me of the fresh baked goods I used to get at the supermarket in Spain. Yes, I'm that person who went abroad and won't ever shut up about it. I also grabbed some frozen salmon, and I normally wouldn't get salmon too much because it's pretty expensive, but the frozen fillets here are super cheap, so I grabbed a bag of them for only 10 bucks. And there you can see, for comparison, the fresh salmon is almost $10 for a single piece, so frozen is the way to go, tastes just as good, and it takes like no time to thaw. I hear a lot of people in New York City shop at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, but I don't have those close to where I live, so I shop at this grocery store called Super Food Town. I've seen some crazy shit go down at Super Food Town. Like, I've seen security wrestle with shoplifters, I've seen customers berate cashiers, cashiers berate customers, customers berate me, but honestly the produce is fire so I keep coming back. I also have a club card here, so every time I shop I accumulate points and get discounts, so that's pretty nice. I haven't paid for eggs in months because I accumulated enough points to exchange them for eggs, so that came in handy when the eggs were crazy expensive. When I get home, I always have to play a little bit of Refrigerator Tetris to get the food stored. If you have roommates, comment down below, how do you divide the fridge? Sundays are laundry day, and I don't have a washer or dryer in my building, let alone my apartment, so that means a trip to the laundromat. Luckily there's one on my block, so I don't have to go too far. But I went to this one that was far away, because it was easier to shoot in. I'll maybe eat out once a week, but I usually cook all my meals. I don't know if it really saves me much money, because as you'll see at the end of the video, groceries are expensive in New York City but I still like to do it because it makes it easier to eat healthy and keep track of what I'm eating. This is a staple food of mine. It's just potatoes and eggs. That is sugar-free ketchup and barbecue sauce with Frank's Red Hot on top. And yes, I'm eating it with a spoon. It's the only way to do it. My days throughout the week are pretty much identical. I wake up and start working from home. Right now I make short form news videos for insider news and I sometimes turn videos into written articles. 
Journalism is a notoriously low paying field, so if you want to live comfortably in New York City, you're better off being a software engineer. At the end of the workday, I work out, and I simply can't be bothered to leave my home, so I just work out in my office. That usually entails a ton of push ups. I follow a workout app on my phone. I use Heria Pro from this guy, Chris Heria. I used to think home workouts were easy until I started following this guy's plans. I mean, maybe I just don't have enough tattoos, but these workouts have literally made me throw up. You can see right here, like, these slow-mo push-ups are super hard. And these archer push-ups here, you're supposed to use one arm to complete the push-up while using the other arm just for support. And as you can see, I'm sort of struggling here, but this was at the end of my workout, to be fair. Even though I usually work out at home, I do still pay for a gym membership at Blink Fitness. I haven't seen Blink Fitness outside of New York, but it's one of those big, cheap, commercial gyms, kind of like Planet Fitness. It was only 10 bucks a month when I signed up, and I got locked in at that rate, so it's really easy to justify paying for it. It gets insanely packed around 6 p.m. though, and that's one of the reasons I don't always go, but today it wasn't too bad. I like having the option to work out at a gym because it's easier to hit certain muscle groups with weights and machines, and I joke that I don't like to leave the house, but it is good to get out and go somewhere. That's why even though I work from home, I try to make it to the office at least once a week. This office is downtown in Lower Manhattan, so it's a bit longer of a commute, but it's cool to walk around the financial district. The day started off as any normal day would. I got to the office and started to work. I snagged some free snacks from the kitchen. Sometimes they have free meals, but today wasn't one of those days. As I was working, I got called onto a video shoot in Brooklyn. So I loaded up an Uber with camera equipment and headed out. I haven't been to Brooklyn that much, but I was surprised to see that Brooklyn is a lot more residential than Manhattan. It almost looked like we were in the suburbs at some points. We just went deeper and deeper into Brooklyn, and just as I was getting worried I was being kidnapped for some kind of underground fight club, we got to the shooting location. Luckily, if we got hungry during the shoot, there was a taco and Chinese place uh, close by. Brooklyn. There you go. Yeah, so we were doing a video about a hat store in Brooklyn that sells to the Hasidic Jewish community. When I arrived to the shooting location, it was, I guess unsurprisingly, filled with Hasidic Jewish community members. Brooklyn has a big Jewish population, and I guess they all like to hang out at the hat shop. I can tell you that that was for sure not where I expected to end up that day, but it was a pretty fun surprise, so I guess journalism does have some perks. After the shoot was over, I packed up and headed back to Manhattan. Okay, so today is Saturday and it has officially been seven days since I started tracking my spending. So let's see how much I spent. Here are all the receipts for the groceries I bought throughout the week. As you can see here, during the big shopping trip, I spent $150. Then I had to go to the store two more times this week, so I spent another $35 there. I went to the 99 cent store for something, which by the way, you'll see these 99 cent stores all over the city, and nothing in there costs 99 cents. I mean, it says in huge letters on the front of the store, 99 cents, so you would think they would have something that costs 99 cents, but I digress. I ended up spending $16 there. So in trips to the store alone, I ended up spending $201.
Then at the laundromat, I ended up spending about $7.25. I went into the office this week, so that was $2.75 both ways. Then for the Uber trips to and from Brooklyn, I ended up paying $126.41, tip included, but my job is supposed to reimburse me for that, I hope. So overall, I really only paid for the essentials this week, but on top of that, I have other monthly expenses that factor into this number. So I have my gym membership, which I was paying $10.45 a month for, but I just looked at my credit card billing statement and those cheeky bastards raised it to $13.59. So that divided by four is $3.40 for this week. Then I have monthly subscription services. So I'll divide the monthly payment by by four to represent one week. I pay for Spotify for music and podcasts. That's 270. I pay to use music for this channel and I also pay for LinkedIn premium. Then I have my cell phone bill. I use Mint Mobile because Ryan Reynolds was just so charming. I had to buy it. It's hard to believe that Mint Mobile can be good at just $15 a month. So as Mint's new owner, <laughs> Got he. then of course there's this apartment. By the way, I did a video tour of this apartment, so if you haven't checked that video out yet, after this video, go check that out. And while you're there, consider subscribing. So my rent is $1,200 a month, so that's $300 a week, which brings my grand total to what I spend in a week to $533.85. That's not too bad, right? I mean, this was a bare bones week. I didn't go for any drinks or eat out at any fancy restaurants, which could easily bring this total up by a few hundred dollars. And you also have to factor in that in, during a regular week, sometimes, you know, there's random unexpected expenses like something breaks or you decide you need to buy a fog machine. Yes, yes, I bought a fog machine. Don't ask me why, it's none of your business. This was $55, so it brings my total up to just under 600 for the week, but it was basically a necessity. So if I spend like I spent this week, minus the fog machine every week, I would spend $2,135 a month, which is $27,760 a year. And like the title of this video says, right now I make less than $50,000 a year. So I'll let you do the math on how much that leaves me to save. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some insight into how much it costs to live in New York City. If you wanna see more of me, don't forget to subscribe. Liking and commenting helps the channel grow, so if you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm gonna need the channel to grow to pay for fog machines, I guess. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.